ladies and gentlemen. All of us here are college students, and money is very important to us. Even if we weren't college students, money would still be very important. Well, we could be saving a lot more money if it wasn't for gas. Maybe some of you already do save by riding your bikes, taking the bus, or walking. I ride my longboard. Well, there are very there are a lot of alternate fuel sources that we could use that are a lot cheaper and more much more reliable than the ones we use now. The ones we use now are gasoline and diesel, and these come from oil. So hundreds of millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were simple celled organisms called phytoplankton and algae, and they thrived in our world. Earth back then was a huge ocean. These organisms used the sun's energy into chemical energy and converted carbon dioxide into oxygen. When they died, they fell into the ocean floor and were covered by sediment, sand and rocks. Over time, with pressure and heat, they became oil. Oil powers almost everything in our lives today. It's used for almost everything. The oil that we dig is called crude oil or petroleum and it's used to make gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, engine oil, cylinder stock, black oil, and asphalt. Oil drilling was started around three to 4,000 years ago, but we recently started digging more than before, around 150 years ago. Ever since, we have been digging for oil all over the world. Today, 80% of our oil reserves are in the in are in third world countries, therefore we are depending on them for our supply. Let me give you the big picture on our dependency on oil. The US has 4.5% of the world's population. We use one third of the world's oil and we make up for almost 50% of the world's CO2 emissions. Let's go back to the first engine powered by oil. This is the diesel engine, made by the one and only Dr. Rudolf Diesel. Diesel realized how wasteful the steam engine was. It wasted 90% of its energy, so he created what we know now as a diesel engine. What many people don't know about Dr. Diesel was that he was a pe peanut farmer. So in his engine, he used peanut oil. This engine still runs today. Similar to Diesel's engine, Henry Ford introduced his Model T in 1908, which ran on ethanol. Ethanol is corn oil. Corn oil plus distillation plus fermentation equals ethanol. But on January 17, 1920, prohibition prevented the use of alcohol, and alcohol is a product of the distillation and fermentation of corn. This is when we began to use diesel fuel and gasoline in our vehicles. This next clip will show you the differences of the gasoline and di diesel engine and how they work. The diesel engine uses the same four-stroke combustion cycle as a gasoline engine. That's intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. In a gasoline engine, fuel is mixed with air and then compressed and ignited. In a diesel engine, the air is compressed before the fuel is injected. Since air heats up when it's compressed, the fuel ignites without the need for a spark plug. Now we're done looking at diesel and gasoline. Now let's look at diesel, gasoline, and biofuels. In 2007, the emission standards on diesel and gasoline vehicles were the same and there is a 30% increase in diesel fuel economy and in some cases it's even more than that. Biodiesel has a reduction of certain toxic compounds and has an 80% to 90% decrease in CO2 emissions. This makes biodiesels a lot more reliable than gasoline, but are they more reliable than ethanol? Well, when we make gasoline we use one unit of energy and we get back 80 percent of it and that's not reliable with ethanol we use one unit of energy and we got and we get one unit back this is better than gasoline but we need something more reliable we could also be digging in to our own food supply when we make biodiesels we use one unit of energy and we get three back 
This makes it a lot more reliable than gasoline and ethanol. There are many things we could use to make biodiesel. Peas, even weeds from your backyard. But the best plant we could use is one of the most ancient forms of life this earth has known. And that is algae. Algae can grow from a petri dish to a large scale fermenter of hundreds of thousands of liters in a matter of days, making it perfect for biodiesel. We take 150 million year process, which is what it takes to make oil that we use in our cars right now, and we condense it to three days, and we end up with oil that when burned doesn't add additional carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Every diesel engine can make the switch to biodiesel today without any changes to the engine. Imagine the benefits. Think about your chair that you're sitting on. That chair was most likely brought to you from overseas. Almost everything comes from overseas. The boat comes from across the ocean powered by a diesel engine. It gets unloaded at a port and put on a train powered by a diesel engine. The train brings it to a distribution center where your stuff gets unloaded on a truck powered by a diesel engine. The choice to save Earth is ours, and we need to make it now, before it's too late.